Well, we've told you before about a gene editing technology called CRISPR, which allows scientists to cut out a section of DNA and replace it with newer, healthier material. Well, now a new tool called Prime Editing may be able to do that even better. Joining me now from Boston is one of the people who's involved in the development of both CRISPR and Prime Editing, biochemist David Liu. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. Talk to me about Prime Editing. The technique was developed in your lab. How does it work and what makes it better than CRISPR? So prime editors are molecular machines that are made of uh, two uh, molecules. There's a protein that we engineered by combining a disabled form of the CRISPR scissors that normally cut DNA together with another enzyme called the reverse transcriptase, which can copy RNA sequences into DNA sequences. So this protein works together with a special RNA called a PEG RNA that not only targets a certain site in the genome, uh, like CRISPR can, but also directly replaces the sequence uh, of, of unedited DNA that you wish to replace with uh, new DNA that's specified by this PEG RNA. So these two molecules work together to orchestrate a complicated search and replace mechanism that can directly replace uh, original DNA sequences with a wide variety of just about any kind of local change to the DNA that you wish to install. So you said in one study that prime editing was the potential to correct about 89% of known pathogenic human genetic variants. Now, if we were to start using this technology tomorrow, what are some of the first things we could start fixing? So it's important to clarify that uh, while prime editing's versatility means that we can, in principle, fix up to, say, 89% of the known kinds of mutations that cause genetic diseases like sickle cell anemia or Tay-Sachs disease, uh, that correcting those mistakes is just one step in a bigger process of actually trying to treat a disease. So treating those diseases will require uh, not only correcting the mistakes in our DNA, but also developing ways of delivering these molecular machines into animals and eventually into patients and, of course, monitoring for safety and potential side effects. So there's still a lot of work ahead, but we're really excited that we have these machines that can actually reverse the DNA changes that we know cause a lot of genetic diseases. Okay, okay, let's stay on this path for just a moment, because I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, fascinated by the potential and how this could possibly work. Uh, how do the changes from DNA editing work? Are they immediate, does the, uh, or, or does it need to be passed along to the next generation for it to take effect? Yeah, so they would be immediate in the cells that you uh, deliver the prime editing machines into. Uh, so the prime editors work by directly taking one of your DNA strands and adding letter by letter a new segment of DNA that you specify. The machine then works with the cell to get that new segment of, of freshly synthesized DNA to replace the old, original, unedited DNA. And so in that sense, it's truly a search and replace mechanism and it will immediately replace the DNA sequence in those cells. So if you deliver the prime editor, hypothetically speaking, to, for example, the liver, uh, you would replace those liver cells that have uh, potentially a mutation that causes some genetic liver disease with uh, new DNA that lacks the mutation and has, is, has the normal DNA sequences. David Liu, it's, uh, it's uh, absolutely fascinating. Uh, you and your team are on the cutting edge, and we thank you for sort of pulling back the curtain a little bit for us today. Well, thank you for your interest in science. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.